until we meet again. By his counsel's guide uphold you, with his sheep securely fold you. God be with you till we Welcome back to Oak Chapel United Methodist Church. I say welcome back because we missed you last week. We had uh, intended to be with you on uh, the first Sunday in June, but uh, some things came up as often do in life, and uh, we were unable to bring you a service from last week. So we apologize for that, but we're delighted to be back with you here on June 14th. I'm Pastor John Finn, and I'm coming to you from what you might consider to be a pretty familiar place in the church near the back of the church. Uh, we all like to sit in the back sometimes, right? Sometimes that's people's favorite spot in the church. But I like to feature this part of our church because of the stained glass behind us and kind of give you a different look on things. So once again, it's great to have you here on this Flag Day, June 14th, 2020. We have been through a lot in recent weeks and months. And I just wanted to say a couple of things about the flag. I know it can be very polarizing and we understand that. We certainly support those who have fought for the freedom of the flag. We greatly respect that and we're so thankful for our freedom. We also understand that it doesn't mean the same thing to every person who sees it. And so we respect that as well. But the flag is a symbol of our freedom and we salute the freedom and we salute all who have served and who continue to serve in defense of our freedom. The freedom of expression, the freedom of religion, all of the freedoms that we enjoy here in this country. So if you are a member of the armed services, we give you thanks for your service and thank you for that. If perhaps the flag has represented something different for you, we certainly understand that. We are sympathetic to that and we reach out to you as well. We all want to come together. This is a time as a nation, as a people, as a church, that we need to come together. And so that's what we look toward here today. And speaking of coming together, we are happy to report that on this Sunday, June 14th, we will be having a service at Oak Chapel. It will be a little bit different. We're actually going to be outside, and it will give you an opportunity to be physically distanced, to feel comfortable. And if you have particular needs and really want to be safe, you'll also have an opportunity to worship from your car. Now we know that's not original. We know a number of other churches in the area have done that. We think it's a good idea, but we finally have set up the uh, system here where you can hear us on your FM radio. So if you want to join us on Sunday, June 14th, and you're seeing this in the morning or before that, uh, you are welcome to do so. We'll be worshiping at 1030 and uh, you're welcome to come and be with us. We are, again, trying to be as accessible as possible. We are delighted to have an opportunity to gather again. We won't be able to hug, we won't be able to shake hands, but we will be together in worship. If you are seeing this at a different time and you were with us this morning, I have good news, the message is different. So you can stay tuned and, and be with us. But if you missed us this morning, we'll be back next Sunday, June 21st, the 28th as well. We're hoping to be outside, weather permitting, but on July 5th, we will finally gather again here in this sacred sanctuary, and we hope you can join us for that. If in that intervening time, your church is not yet open, and you would like to join us on the 14th, the 21st, 28th, whatever, you are most welcome to do so. So we hope that uh, you'll have that opportunity. As we begin our service today, we would like to start with a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, as we gather today, a nation divided, a nation in turmoil, a nation dealing with health issues, social issues, ethnic issues, economic issues, and so much more. 
Lord God, we ask you to be with us today to give us the guidance, the enlightenment to come together and to be one as you intended. In your most holy name we pray. Amen. So here we are in mid-June, and it is vacation time. But certainly the events of the past few months have altered our plans, at least for many of us. Maybe some of you made plans and you're going to stick to it, and that's great. Others may have had to change plans, and some may not have been planning a vacation after all. But we would like to advise that there is a great need for that release, for that relaxation to, to get away, even if you take what they call a staycation and, and you remain at home to spend some time in, in your backyard or to go to a local park or wherever you can find some refuge and some peace, we would encourage you to get away and have an opportunity to reflect and to relax a little bit. So as we open today, I want to share with you perhaps the most famous passage from the Bible, at least in terms of the Psalms in the Old Testament, the 23rd Psalm. It's rather short. I'm sure it will be quite familiar to you, but I want to share it from the King James Version of our Bible as we reflect on this, the 23rd Psalm, at a time of angst and uncertainty, even panic for some, an opportunity to reflect on where we are in our faith and gain strength from our faith. Let us take time now to reflect on the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Well, I hope that brings you some comfort. Every time I read the 23rd Psalm, I feel relaxed and refreshed. It gives me perspective. And that's what vacations do, too. So if you have a chance, or maybe if you were contemplating a vacation, or if you think about what your favorite, your ideal vacation would be, where would it take you? For me, I like to go to the beach. I don't go on vacation every year, maybe every three or four years if, if I'm lucky. But if I have a chance, I like to go to the beach. Because nothing to me is more calming and settling than the waves that gently crash on the shore. And it just gives me a sense of peace when I'm out there. So I enjoy going to the beach and, frankly, doing nothing. Just reading a good book or just relaxing, getting a little nap if I, if I have time for that. So everybody has a different choice of the way they would like to spend their leisure time on vacation. But those waves that I talked about often mount into a storm. And they come crashing pretty hard into the shore. But oftentimes those waves are not the greatest storms that we face in life. They are the literal waves, but it's the other waves, the figurative waves that we face that often cause the greatest angst. So today I want to talk a little bit about those waves, those storms, which really all of us are facing in one way or another right now. And we're all sort of united in that in one way or another. The pandemic has certainly caused us a great deal of uncertainty and angst for our health, for the health of our loved ones. Where does all of this lead? Will I become one to be infected? Will I be affected? Will my health be affected? But we are very, very concerned about something that we have never really experienced before in a century. So it's all new to us. Likewise, the unrest that we have in our country right now as a divided nation, that has certainly been viewed as a storm. And there are a lot of different angles to this story. And I think that what's most important right now as we struggle through this storm, as the waves are crashing all around us, where do we go? Where do we find refuge? Where do we find peace? Certainly, we turn 
to the Word of God. And we hope that the 23rd Psalm gives you a portion of that peace, a chance to reflect and to relax a little bit and, and to put things into perspective. But I also want to share what we might do in response to the waves that crash around us, to the storm that we all experience. So I want to call your attention now to a passage from the Gospel of Matthew. Again, you're probably quite familiar with this, but I think it really helps us define what our role can be, what our role should be all of the time, but especially during the storm. So I want to share with you today a passage from the Gospel of Matthew that talks about our response, what we might do, how we might be a calming influence when the waves are crashing all around us, when we are right in the middle of the storm. What can we do to make things better? How can we respond as disciples of Christ? So again, I call your attention to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Could it possibly be that simple? I like to look at the light not necessarily as originating with us, because in my belief, the light comes from the Lord and the Lord only. But we can reflect that light and show that light and share that light with others. So I might ask you the question today, where is your light? And what are you doing with that light? Are you hiding it under a bowl, sticking it under the bed where no one can see it? Are you letting it shine? Are you putting it out there? Not in a, a bold way, but in a way that others can see it, actually in a gentle way, that others can be attracted to that light and listen to what you have to say in a kind and gentle way. This is the way that in the midst of a storm, we can be the light of the world as we reflect the light of the Lord. So we talked about division. It's very complicated. It will take a while for us to come back together and to understand that we all serve one God, and we'll do it. But first we need to surrender to Him, to His light, and then to reflect that light, and to understand that we might still have differences of opinion. Certainly there could be misunderstandings, but we can put that aside. We can be a leader by being the light, by showing the light, by showing the way to others. That's what we're encouraged to do at this time, more than any other time, to be the light, to show the light, to share the light. Because let's face it, a lot of people are hurting. We're hurting. Everyone during these past 12 weeks or so have experienced times of darkness, despair, uncertainty, pain, suffering. We're all in this together. We've seen the signs everywhere that say that, right? And the only way we can get through it is together. So let us focus on the light today. Let us think about the light and what we can do to make this a better place by sharing that light with one another and guiding others to the foot of the cross to the Lord himself, who brings us peace, a peace that transcends all understanding. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we find ourselves in the midst of a storm, violent and unceasing, waves crashing all around us. We ask you, Lord, to grant us peace, to give us wisdom, to show us mercy, so that we can work our way through the difficult times with the guidance of your most holy word. Amen. So as we all know, when Jesus was with his disciples, he taught them how to pray. And he gave them a very important prayer. 
a prayer that they then passed along to us, and then we in turn need to pass along to future generations. But today I invite you to reflect on the Lord's Prayer as Cindy Mykrantz shares her wonderful musical talents with us. Thank you, Cindy. We're so grateful for that, and I hope you were uplifted and inspired by the musical rendition of our Lord's Prayer. Before you go, a couple of quick announcements. Again, a reminder, if you were not with us earlier, we are open at Oak Chapel. Our services will be outside on June 14th, 21st, and 28th. We'll make do with the elements. We'll also have a drive-in opportunity where you can hear the service on your car radio. And uh, we'll continue to come this way toward you through various media online and uh, through the good folks at MCTV to uh, allow you to share and worship with us. So if you are without a church, if you're looking for a place, Oak Chapel is open and welcoming to you. But even if you have a church and perhaps they're not open yet, come and join us for worship here in the weeks to come. I don't know about you, but I've certainly missed worship on Sunday mornings. I've had a chance to attend a couple of services, informal and the like, even outside, and I've been uplifted by that. We don't just have to worship on Sunday mornings, but we've become so conditioned to that that there's certainly been a void in our lives without having a place to go on Sunday. We have a place, and you are welcome in that place. One other quick announcement. I think I've mentioned this in previous weeks. We have a youth movement going here at Oak Chapel. We're building a youth program, and we would love for you to become involved. If you know of someone that might benefit, has no place to go perhaps, a young person, high school age basically, they are welcome to come, middle school as well. We are trying to build a youth program here, so please come and join us. Or if you're one of those young people that has maybe gotten disconnected or maybe never connected to begin with, we have a place for you here at Oak Chapel. That's the word I want to leave you with here this morning. If you would associate one word with our church, it would be welcome. You are welcome here. So today, as we close out our service, we thank you for joining us. We invite you to be with us at any time. Let us now close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for this brief time together. We give you thanks for the technology and those who have helped to bring you our message and our service today. We hope that you found comfort, refuge from the storm, 
and that you will find peace despite the despair and despite the darkness. As we go forth today, let your light shine. Let everyone see whom you follow, what you believe. Make the world a better place for others and for yourself. This we pray in the holy name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God be with you till we meet again.